In the first part of this Revelation series, we were introduced to John and why he wrote this book. Yahshua appeared to him while he was in exile and told him to write the things that he was about to see and send it to the seven churches in Asia Minor. The first part, chapters 1 through 3, displayed the messages to the seven churches. We saw that though the letters were written a little less than 2,000 years ago, they still are relevant to us today. We, as the church, should use those letters to review our walk of faith in Yahshua. We should continue doing the things he is pleased with and correct those things that need correction. But we definitely should have an understanding of what Yahshua wants to communicate to us. The next part of this book goes right into the heart of the book of Revelation. The Apostle John is in the spirit and shown many things that will take place. My goal is just to try to bring the words to life for you so you can get a better idea of what he is saying. The Ruach HaKodesh speaks through the word of Elohim. So if you are reading and hearing his word, you allow the Ruach to speak with you. My goal is to create conditions for this to occur. This information may be heavy and the spirit of fear may try to come against you. It is important to understand that if you rest firmly in Yahshua, then there is nothing to fear. He will sustain you and give you all that you need no matter what comes your way. If you feel scared because maybe you feel that you're not ready for the things that the book of Revelation says will occur, then the answer is simple. Get ready. He has blessed you with more time. Every day is a gift of grace and you need to use it wisely and not take it for granted. There are many that think they have a lot more time to get things right with Elohim while they satisfy their flesh today. All that I can stress to you is that this is a severe miscalculation and it will not serve you in the end. There is nothing more important than being right with Elohim and believing fully in Yahshua. If you don't understand, after you read these next three chapters, it may be a little more clear. I hope this blesses you. Let's begin. Revelation chapter 4 So the Apostle John just finished writing his specific letters to each of the seven churches. He now begins to write what he saw after Yahshua gave those messages and is now about to reveal terrifying events that will occur in the future. He says, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Elohim. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night saying, Holy, 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 Yahweh El Shaddai, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Yahweh, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Revelation chapter 5 And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside, and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much, because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll, or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, 
the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to Elohim by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our Elohim, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom, and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb for ever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives for ever and ever. So when I read these two chapters, I thought they were absolutely beautiful. This right now is all about worship and who is worthy to be worshipped. There's a massive amount of imagery described. So before we continue on, let's go over what we just read and saw. When he was shown heaven, the first thing he sees is Elohim on the throne. His viewing of Elohim on the throne dominates this heavenly scene. Now, when we see the rainbow around the throne, it should remind us about the covenant that Elohim made after the flood. It's found in Genesis chapter 9. It says, And I shall establish my covenant with you, and never again is all flesh cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again is there a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living being that is with you, for all generations to come. I shall set my rainbow in the cloud, and I shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And it shall be, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud, and I shall remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living being of all flesh. And never again let the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I shall see it, to remember the everlasting covenant between Elohim and every living being of all flesh that is on the earth. Genesis chapter 9, verses 11 through 16. So this rainbow around the throne seems to be implying that Elohim remembers the covenant he made and another type of judgment is about to come to the earth. Now when we see the 24 elders on the thrones, it is not clear who they actually are. We know just in the chapter before, chapter 3 verse 21 in his message to the church of Laodicea, Yahshua promises to those that will overcome that they will sit with him on the throne. But these elders are not the church and being that they are wearing robes and crowns, indicates that they have already been judged and rewarded. Now, let's talk about the four living creatures. The four living creatures are very similar to the cherubim, also known as angels, that Ezekiel saw close to Elohim's throne in Ezekiel chapter 10. Verse 14 of chapter 10 says, Each one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. The second face, the face of a man. The third face, of a lion. And the fourth the face of an eagle. This was very much like we saw in verse 7 of chapter 4. You will find many scriptures in the Old Testament from the prophets that speak to much of the imagery that you see in the book of Revelation. So in chapter 4, we saw a description of worship of Yahweh in heaven, and it's absolutely beautiful. When we get to chapter 5, we see a scroll in Elohim's hand that no one was able to open and read until all seals had been opened. This scroll as we will see soon, contains the judgments and redemption seen later in the book of Revelation. No creature in all of creation was found worthy to open the seals on the scroll. In verse 5 and 6 of chapter 5, 
we see the magnificence of Elohim's plan. John was weeping because no one was able to open the scroll. But one of the elders said to him, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. When we see what is contained in the seals and the scroll, we again see that Yahshua is fulfillment of Elohim's purpose. Yahshua is the only one worthy. He was the slain lamb. Remember, John the Baptist in the book of John chapter 1, verse 29, referred to Yahshua as the lamb of Elohim who takes away the sins of the world. Yahshua came and took the scroll from the right hand of Elohim. This vision clearly shows that judgment and authority over the earth is committed to the Son, as Yahshua said many times in his ministry. After Yahshua takes the scroll, the elders and the four living creatures now sung a new song, celebrating Yahshua, for he was worthy to open the scroll. And in the end, he saw every creature in heaven and earth and under the earth praise and honor the Lamb. This was confirming the prophecy of Philippians chapter 2, verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Yahshua HaMashiach is Adon, to the glory of Elohim the Father. So what we just witnessed is what is happening in heaven when the judgment of the last days and when the great tribulation starts. And we see at the end of chapter 5 the climax of all these events. It's purely awesome. You do not need to try to correlate these chapters with what's happening in front of your eyes. Chapters 4 and 5 are just a testimony of how wonderful and awesome Yahshua truly is. He deserves honor and praise. Praise him now, willingly, because I guarantee you, you will praise him someday in the future, as the climax of chapter 5 shows. Revelation chapter 6 Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see! And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering, and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see! Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of Elohim, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, how long, O Adonai, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. And he said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? So we see at this point, we still do not know what is in the scroll. When we start Revelation chapter 6, we are seeing Yahshua open each of the seals. 
We are not seeing Elohim's final judgment yet. This is what is written in the scroll. The seven seals are the things that happened before Elohim's final judgment. Now I must point out that this is where much of the debate and confusion is found. Many people like to say that these seals will happen before the Great Tribulation. Many say they will be the start of the Great Tribulation. I do not pretend to know truly who is right or wrong. What I do know for certain is that it is trouble. It very much is like what Yahshua calls the beginning of sorrows in Matthew chapter 24 verse 8. Let's review what we see in chapter 6. Chapter 6 is where we see the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There are four horses, each with a rider. One white horse, one red horse, one black, and one pale. Let's cover the first four seals. The first seal, the conqueror. The first horse is white. This horse brings much confusion because in Revelation 19, we see Yahshua also coming in on a white horse. But this horseman is not Yahshua. This horseman is only given one crown, while Yahshua has many crowns. And it is also too early for Yahshua to appear. This is something different. Many like to say that this is the Antichrist, but it doesn't seem to fit. The Antichrist will not come as a conqueror at first. He will come as a solution. What's important to understand, I believe, is that you do not need to fit a single character as these horsemen. When you look at the other horsemen, it's obvious that they are not individuals. So there's no reason to place this first horseman as one. This seal that has been opened is the conqueror. We don't know much about what he is conquering because scripture obviously doesn't give enough to go off of. So I don't give it much thought. I do not spend time on things that the father hasn't given much information on. When you do, this is where confusion comes in and many false teachings start creeping in. So let's just move to the next seal. The second seal, conflict on earth. This is the red horse, and this horse will bring conflict and death on earth. Does this mean war between nations, or could it be more civil between people? When I read this scripture, what pops in my mind is the predictive programming they've given us in a movie called Kingsman. In the movie, there was a plot to reduce the world population because of climate change. What they did was create a situation where the people of the earth started killing each other, and you saw it all around the world, everybody was killing each other, while the rich and powerful hid in a cave somewhere. This is immediately what comes to my head when I read this. So this definitely could be one way this seal is carried out. Many might want to think that it means war, but it doesn't sound like it will be carried out by war amongst nations, because it says people will be killing one another, not nations against nations or something similar. But then again, we don't know for sure. The third seal, scarcity on earth. Now this is the black horse. He says he heard someone say in verse 6, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. You see, a denarius is worth one day of wages during that time. So a quart of wheat for a denarius is like saying $25 for a loaf of bread. There is not enough food and is extremely expensive to eat. This may be the case in current countries right now in the world, but this is about the whole world, not just specific places. It is absolutely something you will see when the collapse of the US dollar occurs. Watch my video on this subject for more information about this. What John was referring to is like hyperinflation. Bottom line, when this seal is open, food will not be as easy to obtain as it is today. And it's obvious that this seal has not been opened yet. It will though, so be prepared for it. The fourth seal, widespread death on earth. Okay, so now this is picking up. This is the pale horse and is coming with problems. This is the consequences of the first three seals. Power was given to this horseman over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. And a fourth of the world population will be killed. Today in 2018, the world population sits at 7.7 .7 billion. So we are talking a little less than 2 billion people killed on earth. If you are not right with Elohim before this time, it will be too late for you. It's time to make a decision for him now. But those are the four horsemen in the book of Revelation. We have two more seals in chapter 6. The fifth seal, Cry of the Martyrs. Under the altar, we see the souls who have been slain for the word of Elohim. They are impatient for Yahweh to avenge their blood and judge all those who are not among his redeemed. Just go back to the beginning of the church and you will see a long history of the martyrs who died for their testimony and belief in Yahshua. They were given white robes 
but asked to rest a little while longer until it was completed that the rest of their fellow servants and brethren would be killed as they were. I know it's very sad, but it's the reality. This is why I always tell believers to expect persecution. Understand the rapture of the church has not happened yet. If it did, those souls would not have been asked to rest a while longer. Many of us will be persecuted for our testimony. It is a reality. That's why we should read the letter to the church of Smyrna, the persecuted church. We are not promised to not suffer harm or persecution, but we are promised eternal life and a crown of life if we remain faithful. You must rest in Yahshua. Much of the church is not ready for the hard times or persecution. You must strengthen your faith. The Sixth Seal Cosmic Disturbances This was the Sixth Seal. Now you must remember what happened before the seal was opened. The earth lost 25% of its population. At this time I bet people thought it couldn't get any worse. But then here comes a great earthquake and stars from heaven fell to the earth. And all the great men of the earth went underground and in the mountains. They are trying to hide from the wrath of Elohim. Now if you are paying attention, the world is preparing for this to occur. Currently today. Earthquakes are coming much more regular. Just the other day in Indonesia, an earthquake killed over 800 people. We pray for them sincerely. In America, we are all preparing for the San Andreas Fault to shift. My point is that we are expecting this seal and don't even realize it. Do you know that bunkers are being sold more than ever, right now? They are actually a status symbol. This is just confirmation of Revelation chapter 6 for those that believe. This is all about Elohim's wrath. So this is what occurred in Revelation chapter 6 when Yahshua opened the first six seals. We still have another seal to be opened along with other events. We will go over many other things in the next video to come because we have the 144,000 sealed and the two witnesses. But this is what the book of Revelation foretells. It makes a lot of sense when you read it without forcing things to be what you want it to be. Do I think the church will be around for the opening of these seals? Obviously, I don't know for sure. But according to the fifth seal, many of the believers who were martyred are still being asked to rest, so it's likely that the church has not been called yet. I know this is very heavy and probably a reason why many of us do not read this book. These things that are going to occur are not pleasant at all. We don't see the pleasant things until the end of the book, honestly. This is why I always stress to have the right expectations in your beliefs. I don't know how things will play out in the future, but I do know that if you place your trust and faith in him, he will get you through it. There is no reason to fear if you believe in him. If you are making him the priority, you have nothing to fear. Now, if you're playing around and not making Elohim the priority, I would have fear, yes. Read the word of Elohim and put your trust in the Father. He will supply all your needs and take care of you. You must be committed to him, though. These things are reality for the world, regardless if you believe in the book of Revelation or not. If you watch any movies about the future, there are always events like these that happen. Great calamity and death, and then a new world arises. You cannot control it or fight against it. The only thing that can be done is trusting in the Father for protection and peace. If you're feeling a sense of fear right now, you're the reason I'm making this video. What your fear shows is that you do not have enough faith and or commitment in the Father. You need both. Get in the word of Elohim and commit yourself to strengthening your relationship and trust in him. There is nothing more important than this. Wake up to the time you are in. The whole world are waiting for these seals to be open. Are you ready when they are? Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I would like to give a special thank you to those who have donated and contributed to this ministry. Your contribution and support are a huge blessing to me and give me strength to continue. Thank you for your obedience to Yahweh's call on your heart. I am humbled by your support and I'm very, very thankful for you. Okay, thanks again everybody for watching. I love you all.